Watch up. Today we're doing an unboxing. We're going to unbox one of the Roy OB tools that I um, bought before. We I've been looking for a shop vac, but I haven't got enough space to put you know wood chippers and you know all the great big cyclones and extractor units. So I've just bought myself like a little small basic um, one, and this is the one we bought. It's the the Roy OB shop vac. Comes with the, uh, it doesn't come with a battery because it's part of the OnePlus system. It's um, you know fairly compact, and um, for all the, the reviews I've seen online, it seems pretty good. So let's have an unbox of this and see what it's like. Okay. I do love these Oppenel knives, they're called gentlemen's knives. They're really nice. So we've got the standard Ryobi One Plus literature with all of their tools within it. We've got the safety warnings and instructions, etc. And we've got the box with bits in it. Okay. We've got the instruction booklet. we've got aha uh -huh. so this is an adapter to to change um, fittings from larger to small okay so that fits on I guess well, on your tool somewhere I suspect let's have a look one plus battery basic tag and come off put in the box okay that's not too heavy at all it's a little bit front heavy, but I suspect when we put a battery in, the lever now. It's fine, Mike. Here we are. So the battery goes in. Yeah, now it's fairly evenly weighted. Any charge in my battery? <laughs> yeah, quite loud. Right, so let's take the battery out. Bring you down a little bit closer. Okay, so we've got the on-off switch. Feels a little bit loose. Perhaps you could knock that with your hand. My first impression on that. Hey ho! But I'm going to be mounting it underneath my work workbench anyway, and having the hose coming out. Apparently, apparently this is quite a long hose. Do I remember them saying seven meters or nine meters or something? There's no way that this hose goes that far. Come on. What's this nonsense? Yeah, if I put that underneath my workshop, I should get um, most of my work underneath my work bits, most of my workshop. So we've got a hose there. We've got an attachment here. That just clips on. So you can do upholstery or slightly wider. Now I know from the reviews I read before I bought this that this is a wet vac so it, um, it it will suck up moisture as well and it's got a fairly fairly large um, fairly large receptacle for storing the water and um, and dirt let's have a little look at that so this holds 11 litres and suction is 1400 litres per minute Weighs 4.1 kilograms, that's without the battery on. You know, you don't want to be carrying it around all day, but it's not one of those type of um, shop bags, is it? You're just going to put it in the side somewhere and connect it to your um, power tools when you're using them. Um, easy catch on the front. Take that off. Okay, okay. Doesn't hinge, there's a catch at the back as well. Okay, so that comes off. And you can see here, with the filter and you can see the ball there that confirms that it's a wet dry obviously as the water level rises the ball will rise up and block off the the you know the aperture there to stop any more moisture going in it just quickly screws on there that's easy enough to do us I'm not so sure these are whoops not in the camera I'm not so sure these are wash washable so it may be that when they're full up or 
knackered, you've got to buy a new one. Shouldn't think that's too much money. Just stand the plastic underneath. Yeah, basically made, but that's all you want, isn't it? That's all you want. Get that in there. That's your basic bit of plastic base. There's a hole there, which would hold, I suspect, more than 11 litres. But once the ball valve comes up and cuts it off, that's probably what the 11 litres means. The adapter goes on the side there. Um, yeah, it's a nice little, it's a nice little shop back. It's, you know, it's fairly cheap. It's not too much. I can't actually remember how much it was, but I'll post a, I'll post some in the comments on screen how much it cost. Now I know from watching Spectrum Geeks who reviewed this, and I'll put a link to his video in the uh, top right hand corner he um he noticed that there wasn't anywhere to store this on the unit and i agree yeah it's uh, there is nowhere for it to store it which is a downside but all of this information is all well and good but you can read about this online what you want to know in a review is how it performs so uh let me do a little bit of a test i'll record some of that and i'll come back with my thoughts Well, my initial thoughts, based purely on hoovering up that bit of sawdust and chippings, etc., on the floor, is that the actual nozzle itself here is quite narrow. Things were getting stuck in it. Um, let's have a measure up. It's only an inch across, so it's 25 mil. That's not very large. This would be better if it was the same size as a conventional hoover, which is, I don't know, what's that, 40 mil, something like that and then had an adapter to take it down if you needed it. So for me, first impression is this is quite narrow and some stuff was getting caught in there. But as it goes, the, the, the adapter to this on itself was okay. Using the, uh, the adapter that takes it down further, that clogged up a couple of times. I can see the benefit of this, obviously, in small spaces, etc. But I wasn't overly impressed with this, to be honest with you. It worked better on its own. Then I tried this attachment, which is the, um, well, what would you call it? It's, is it the um, upholstery attachment? Next to useless, honestly. Um, I don't think I'll be using that much. Unless I've got lots and lots of sawdust on a big area, it might pick it up on a wide area. But for me, this wasn't saying too much at all. The best way of using this, and I've only used it for a minute or so, so and I don't think, you know, my initial feedback was that it wasn't that great using this. A nice little feature of the shop back is that it doesn't only suck, it blows as well. Don't say a word. Don't say a word. Right, so this is the extract port. This is where the air comes out when you turn it on. And obviously, this section here is when it comes in when you suck it, when, you, when it's hoovering up, when it's... Um, I can't think of a better word to say than suck. So, turn this on. It sucks in here. You undo this, you take the, the attachment for the, I'm going to call it the upholstery attachment, you put that on here, you connect the hose to there and you use the section with the two uh, like little plastic clips on the end and this is now a blow function, let me show you. So if we take this down and we use this, you can see by this sawdust that it's going to blow. It 
it's not a particularly powerful jet of air however it's enough to clean your workbench up if you've got some sawdust one engine bench you want to push onto the floor or get away from behind a crevice you know it's trapped behind a uh, mitre saw if you have one I don't something like that then this will be perfect for that um, as I say it's not particularly powerful but it's good enough for the job for those uh, bits of sawdust it's not going to move big items but you know it's an extra function it's pretty good value this is something that Spectrum Geeks also picked up on in his review and I agree with it totally this is the extract where the air comes out when you blow if you look down there you've got a substantial gap you can see you can see light coming through the bottom of it and when you turn this thing on air escapes here if there was a way of sealing that off then I agree with Spectrum Greek you get a lot more pressure coming out of the um, out of the unit um, apart from that there's not too many things to fault on this let's check the noise Okay, standing about a metre away, we, when I'm not speaking, we've got around, around about 40 decibels. Bit of road noise, taking it up to 45. Let's turn it on, see what it goes up to. So using my trusty Parkside um, decibel meter, that's the first time I've used that. It cost about nine pounds from, um, where is it, from Lidl? Yeah, that's not too bad. Assuming it's accurate, of course. Um, we're getting about 80 to 85 decibels from about one meter away and around about 90 close up to the machine. Now, when I was bending over earlier, um, hoovering up the sawdust on the floor, my head was about six inches away from it and it sounded pretty damn loud then but obviously for my situation I'm not going to be that close to it generally I'm going to be further away I'm going to get myself an extendable um, hose you know something I can hold on to so I can go a little bit further you know one of the pl hard rigid plastic ones turn it into more of a um, like a hoover attachment doing the floor as you were so you know it can be improved the rigid the, the flexible hose is great but it's got its limitations. It's certainly not as long as what well, I was led to believe. Um, I probably won't get across the whole side of the workshop with it. However, you can stick extensions on, you'll lose a little bit of suction, but not really anything to write home about. What I've got in here is a five amp hour battery. And when you have the five in there, as you can see, it's fairly level. The battery is just a mil or two below the surface. So I can balance things on there. I can use it, you know, putting things on anything lower than that obviously will be smaller just bear in mind that if you go above a five amp hour battery like a six or seven or something it's going to be higher and it's not going to be flat it's, it's going to protrude up so if you want to use this as a flat surface five amp hour batteries are pretty much the most that you're going to put on here otherwise you're going to have a humpity hump in the middle one of the things I like about this is the is the positive click you get it stays down, it's, it's solid, and it comes up, and it flops down until you click it into place and it's solid. I like that. It just makes me feel like it's been well made. One of the features here that I think is a little bit disappointing are the catches. It, it doesn't take a lot of pressure for this to pop open and for that to, to fall off. You know, once the pressure's off, that just gets knocked, and obviously th this is open then. I'd like to see a little bit more positive pressure required to open this and maybe a bigger lip so this doesn't fly off so if it does get opened it sort of stays there connects a little bit more for me that's a little bit of a downside but doesn't detract away from the unit at all you know we're not paying 500 pound are we rookie So these are just my initial thoughts on the Ryobi ShopVac. It's the R118 PV0, PV slash zero. It's not a very, very technical review. It's just my initial thoughts on how I feel about it on first setup. 
I'll do a review of these Royal Ovi tools in a year or so once I've been using them but I know where the faults are, what the pluses and the minuses are. You can't really review something properly um, and until you've used it a lot. This was, as I say, this was more of initial faults and really an unboxing video. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to look, press the thumbs up button if you liked it. Press the thumbs down button if you didn't. You know, feedback's always good. Please subscribe if you like the work I do. Um, obviously, I want to build up the channel. Down below in the links on the About page, I've got Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Like, follow, subscribe, etc., etc. Whatever you do there, and I'll see you shortly. Bye.